This video will be on injection attacks. Cross-site scripting we discussed before is an injection attack. Injection attack is when the attacker introduces their own code into an existing data stream. This starts by attacker finding a vulnerability with an application, one where it allows the attacker to inject his or her codes. The code gets processed by interpreter as part of the command or query, which then alters the execution of that program. Ensuring you're using reliable application is critical and is the reason why security is important when it comes to designing a product. There are four injection attacks you should know for the Security Plus exam besides cross-site scripting. It's SQL, DLL, LDAP, and XML. SQL is a standardized programming language that is used to manage relational databases and perform various operations on the data in them. Secure web fronts should allow people to pull important information and only pull what is approved for that specific user. However, if it's poorly programmed, attackers will put in inputs that are not validated. Here's an example of SQL injection. In a search bar, attacker puts select asterisk from specific category where account equals nothing or one equals one. Because one equals one is always evaluating to true, sending this statement to the database will result in the data for all customers being returned instead of just single customer. SQL injection can be used to add, modify, and delete data in the database. So it's always important to have a backup and ensure it's properly designed. Next, we have dynamic link library injection. DLL is basically a library of functions that can be accessed by different types of software. It is used to save memory as it is only loaded when needed, and it can be used by multiple programs simultaneously. Note that DLL is not executed by itself. The code in DLL needs to be loaded by an executable and it will be executed by the executable in the same process where the executable resides and with the same system privileges as the executable has. So if a DLL is replaced by a manipulated DLL or the mechanism that loads the DLL, the executable will load the DLL into the process memory space and will start executing functions from the DLL. The code inside the DLL will have access to everything the executable has access to. Next, we have LDAP. Lightweight Directory Access Protocol is an open vendor neutral application protocol used for accessing and maintaining logical distributed directory information services. Organizations often use LDAP to enable single sign-on and to authenticate users on-premises and web-based applications. LDAP directories store objects, which include information about the users and the organization's assets. For example, a person's usernames, passwords, and email address. An LDAP injection attack is when attacker submits an unsanitized user input data, like adding meta characters that manipulate the protocol just like all the other injection. This creates a malformed queries to gain access in order to potentially change data in that directory. Application developers should properly encode and sanitize all information in the application layer. Ensure proper testing and debugging as well as ensuring indexing fields with sensitive information and validating inputs. Next, we have XML, Extensible Markup Language Injection. Once again, this is just like any other injection attack. Attackers conduct injection by introducing malicious codes due to poor validation. XML is similar to HTML. It is designed as a format for the storage and transmission of data. XML is extensible so that it can be tailored for any application by defining how the data is organized and represented. Basically, it's a powerful way to store data in a format that can be stored, searched, and shared. XML injections enable attackers to construct queries that allow an attacker to read or modify XML documents or execute commands in XML-enabled database. This enables attacker to get around the application's front end to ultimately gain access to the stored data that they seek by taking advantage of vulnerabilities that exist in input fields. So that covers all the injection attacks for the Security Plus 601 exam. Yeah.